What's going on everybody? Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here and today we're going to be doing a walk around taking a look at this ARB Ranger build. Now to get right into the details, I want to start by talking about the suspension on this truck, but I will say that we're doing a separate video with a full blown review on the suspension where you're going to get a lot more information and a lot more talk about what my thoughts are and how it feels. So if you are looking for a lot of focused information on this, definitely check that video out. But to give you guys a sense of what's on this truck and how it's equipped, this is running ARB's Old Man Emu suspension and it's specifically the BP-51 kit. Now this is a front coilover and rear shock setup and it's a little different from some of Old Man Emu's other offerings because this is definitely more top tier kind of focused at the same market as like Fox 25s or some of the icons and kings that are out there and so this is not the same as some of Old Man Emu's more utility based suspension where they have a reputation for building things that are expedition focused and you see a lot of land cruisers running their coil spring setups or aftermarket shocks or leafs or whatever that may be. This is definitely meant to be pushed a little bit harder and a little bit faster. And how this is set up is up front, the 51 in BP-51 is actually talking about the internal bore of the shock body within the coilover. So it's a 51 millimeter, which is around two inches internal bore. They're internal bypass shocks as well. And they have external reservoirs in the front as well as piggyback reservoirs in the rear. So there's a little bit more room for travel there, obviously more room for fluid capacity. And then it's designed in such a way that the valving is specifically tuned to this vehicle and this vehicle's weight. Now on top of that, it's also adjustable for compression and rebound separately. There's two little rings that you kind of see on the shock bodies that can be twisted. And the way ARB has it set up right now, they have kind of dialed it to accommodate the extra weight since this truck obviously has bumpers and roof rack and drawers and everything else. There's a lot of extra weight just kind of sitting on it at all times. But the way they have it set up looks really, really nice. It's also adjustable for height. And at the moment they have it at around two inches. And you're probably looking at this thinking that that stance is very similar to what we had on our Ranger. And it, it honestly is. They went for a pretty similar look here in terms of keeping something that's low enough to the ground that it's, it's capable and it's not so tall that the center of gravity is just all over the place. With that suspension in there, they also have these BFG KO2s, which are an all-terrain, and they're a 285-7017, which is the same size that we ran on our Ranger as well, but it fits really nicely here. Obviously, there still had to be some trimming for crash bars and things like that, especially with the bumpers that they added, but it's one of those tire setups that with this amount of suspension lift, you don't get a lot of rubbing or catching on the inner fenders. It's very quiet and it's functional and the truck can articulate without the tires tearing things up as they go up and down. So overall, I think it's a really good look. It works super well on this truck. But moving on from suspension, I actually want to jump up top to the roof rack so we can look at this new base rack system. So for any of you guys who are somewhat familiar with ARB's history, then you know that roof racks were one of the first items they ever built back in the mid 1970s. And that was kind of one of their areas of expertise. And they've been running those classic roof racks on land cruisers and patrols and everything else for years and years and years now. But what we have here is not one of their classic roof racks. It's actually their new base rack system. And this is a little bit different. There's a couple different options on the market that are similar to this, where it's sort of a proprietary roof rack system that has a specific set of accessories that work with it. And it's kind of designed to be modular in a sense, but ARB has done some things different on theirs to make it a little bit unique compared to some of the other stuff that's in the crowd. So one of the first things you'll notice is that this is an all aluminum rack and it's fully welded. So all the cross beams are actually welded to the side parts of the frame. And the only area that it really uses hardware is to actually mount to the vehicle itself. So the brackets underneath are Ranger specific and obviously it's bolting to the roof with those, but the rest of the rack kind of benefits from some additional rigidity and strength because there aren't fasteners holding these pieces together. When you look at it though, you're probably gonna wonder, well, why am I seeing screw heads in the corners and these caps? It looks like those are attached. And the idea here is that these actually aren't structural. It's just plugging the holes on the ends because it's hollow on the inside. And the idea is that you can remove these caps and run your wires through. So if you you have external lighting either into your bed or obviously a light bar on the front or whatever that may be the wiring can fit within the rack and you get a lot cleaner look and it helps with that cable management side of things with the way this rack is designed obviously i mentioned that there's a lot of accessories that are meant to go with it and you can see some of them here so a few of the things that they have optioned onto the ranger at the moment are a jerry can mount right there which i don't have a jerry can to plop in it but that's the idea then we have the treadboard holders up front here we also have the light bar mounted on the front 
They put their wind deflector in there as well to kind of help reduce some of that wind noise. Then obviously right in front of me, we've got some high lift jack mounts on here, which are pretty cool. And then there's a couple other options you can add to this thing. They have stuff for little propane tanks. There's even things like this roller on the back, which I'll explain in a minute. And all these items are designed to work with a specific dovetail system. And what that means is instead of using T channels or slots within the rack, ARB went for kind of a different design. And it's this little dovetail kind of notched section that you see on the sides of the rack. And it goes all the way around the outside as well as along the cross bars here. And how this works is the accessories actually clip onto this and use that lip on the end to hang onto it as opposed to going into a channel. And it basically reduces the ability for mud and dirt and water just to get packed into those channels over time. And you start to get rust or you know additional wear and it can be really hard to clean them out or to remove or add accessories over time as you use the truck off road. Whereas with a system like this, it's really easy to clean them and they don't tend to really hold or lock in mud. So kind of smart there, definitely makes it a little bit more unique and it's a nice way to add accessories to the outside of the rack, like these high lift mounts where it kind of has to hang on that outer edge. And so instead of using up the whole thick inner part of the bar to mount it, you can just use the lip. Now to talk about some of the other additional accessories, this roller, like I mentioned, is a pretty neat little item. It's kind of odd on the Ranger here because this bed is closed off with a tonneau cover and there's a drawer system on the inside. So you probably aren't climbing up towards the back of it that often. But the idea is that with these rollers being added on, if you have this rack on top of say, a bed topper on your truck, or you have this on an SUV or something like that, and you're coming from behind the vehicle and you need to load either lumber or a kayak, or you've got a heavy spare tire or something that you have to get up on here, you can set it against the roller and then slide it onto the vehicle. And it gives you a lot easier access to move things on and off the rack that you aren't able to just simply lift up and off of it. So one of those handy items where, like I said, it's a little odd right here because you can tell that nobody's gonna use it in this position, but in the right kind of build, it could be a big benefit. The other mounts I'm a big fan of are these treadboard mounts. You see a lot of different versions of this on roof racks and overland builds all the time because it's pretty handy to get these things on the roof because they take up a lot of space in the cab and if they're muddy and dirty from being used, you don't really want them sitting in the vehicle with you. And it's such an awkward piece to store that a roof rack is kind of the ideal place to set them. But with ARB's mounts, I like that there's kind of a quick release least design to these. So instead of having to rotate to twist them off, you can actually just pinch it and lift up. And once you have it off, then you can just slide the ramps right out or back into place. And you don't have to sit here and fidget with this thing and rotate it around a thousand times as you turn the threads. So I'm a big fan of the way that that's designed. And I like that once again, it still works within the same system. One thing I do want to mention here is that wind deflector accessory at the front, which is a nice design. And I like that ARB offers this as an option to kind of help force the air around the rack or over it and keep it from making a ton of noise on the first two crossbars. And I think that the design probably does help, but I will say that this rack still isn't super quiet by any means. And that's not necessarily just a knock against ARB. Almost all of these larger platform racks make a lot of noise. And if you're going to have a setup like this, you should probably be anticipating that anyways because obviously a high lift jack and tread boards up here are going to make a lot of noise too. So that's one of those things to keep in mind where it can grate on you over time if you're doing long road trips. And I actually brought this Ranger down here to Arizona from Colorado. So I spent some time in the cab and I could definitely hear it along the way. But something to keep in mind if you are considering an option like this is that it will affect the driver comfort within the cab. Well, I think that's going to cover about all the info we have here on the roof rack. So let's hop back down and go over the rest of the truck. I want to talk a bit about the bumpers on this truck now, but I will say as a quick disclaimer, if you guys are hearing jackhammer noises in the background, I apologize. They decided that today was the day that they needed to tear up all the sidewalk across the street from our building. And it doesn't seem to have any end in sight. So we're trying to time it between the gaps. But anyways, focusing back on the truck, this is probably the most impressionable part of this vehicle. These Summit front bumpers are huge. And when you're driving this thing down the road, it's the first part that really catches people's eye. And it's a really nice piece of equipment. So the Summit bumper is pretty iconic to ARB in general, but basically how this thing is designed is it's a solid steel front bumper with this black powder coating on it. And they have a lot of smart features incorporated here that make this better than just a homebrew steel bumper that you could weld up in the barn out back. So if you move around to the front, you can see 
The, one of the first things I really like is they incorporate a lot of this factory safety features into this. So we've got our parking sensors in here that were still on the vehicle from factory, as well as the adaptive cruise module in the center. And this is all functional still, works perfectly, and it works perfectly even with a worn winch stabbed in here, as well as some huge lights on the front, and obviously just the general change in dimensions that this bumper has, because it's quite a bit bigger and sticks out quite a bit further than the factory one did. I think that's an excellent move by ARB. It makes this feel a lot more factory in a sense to the vehicle because all the features work the way you expect them to. And I'm not even just saying that as a plug for ARB. When I actually drove this truck, the 580 miles or whatever it was from Colorado back to Arizona, I used all of these features and never once had a problem with it reading incorrectly or not functioning or the sensors throwing up errors. It was flawless. So that's a big plus. Outside of just the safety tech, the other stuff that makes this bumper neat is obviously the way it integrates with accessories. So we've got this worn winch tucked in here. It fits really nicely. And the plate across the top is actually a powder coated aluminum plate to match with the rest of the bumper. But even though it sort of blocks off the winch and hides it, you still have good accessibility to it. And they put some clever little plastic hatches in here. So if you open these things up, you can actually get to the winch clutch lever and plug in your remote from the top. And then you have access on the other side as well to get to the motor or anything else that you'll need. So they definitely thought it through. They wanted it to still be functional. And then, you know, we've got our fair lead and everything down here with the hook tucked into it. But they also have areas where you can mount lights. Their Solus lights are mounted here, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And they have some mounts on the top. So in some of the pictures you'll see from them or even some of the other vehicles that run these types of bumpers, people will put a light bar across this or you could even mount antennas or whatever you want onto this. So there's a lot of utility there, but it's designed to work in a way that accessories bolt onto it without you having to fight and cut and weld and make things fit. And that's something I can appreciate as well. Some other things to note, if you move over to the wings of the bumper here on the sides, you can see that ARB also actually includes a fog light housing within these that's LED, and they have these markers in the corner. Now, I know some people don't love this design because it's already built in and ARB kind of forces you into using their equipment here. And that's a valid complaint. I think in a lot of cases, people would probably prefer if this was an open pocket where they could add something like a rigid light or a Baja Designs light or whatever else and you know pick and choose and put something that fits their build. But I will say that ARB does at least include a nice quality light in here. And for people that want that factory feel or something that isn't completely patched together with a mess of aftermarket parts, an option like this can really kind of fill out the vehicle for you. And in a truck that already has fog lights, this can be tied into the factory wiring as well. So that's another big benefit. This front bumper is really only one part of the equation though, because obviously this truck has a lot of body armor on it just all the way around. So if we move along to the sides here, you can see that it actually sort of trails down into the side steps or rock sliders, if you will. And the way ARB has this set up is there's actually two different versions of these rock sliders that you can get. There's one that's just the standard step version that does not include this rail to guard the fender. And then obviously there's this version that does tie into it. And this is pretty neat. You don't see this a whole lot on American vehicles. It's certainly a lot more common in Australia, but this sort of thing that's like an exoskeleton, you typically only find on like rock crawlers or rock bouncers here. It's really handy though, because this is providing some serious protection to one of the easiest areas to dent on the truck, which is obviously your fenders and even kind of leading into your doors. And since it's tied in, these are frame mounted sliders or frame mounted steps that actually lock to the bumper itself. So this is truly structural. It's not just for looks and it's not just gonna fold in or like crumple the steps and create more damage than you would have had otherwise. So I think an option like this is really handy, especially if you are getting into tight tracks and areas where you know that the truck may end up rubbing against a bank or you've got to push against a tree or something that's jutting out into the course. This is just one of those things that can make that huge difference in not having serious body damage on the vehicle. The actual steps or sliders themselves are, like I said, frame mounted, plenty solid. This is all still powder coated steel along the whole way. And then they just drop an aluminum plate on top of it with a little bit of a textured finish to the top. So that way you get some good tread. And this, since it's aluminum, isn't going to rust or really corrode anyways. So gives it a pretty nice look. I like that this is not just a step and that it does provide the functionality of protecting the truck as you slide over obstacles. And there's some real durability there. A lot of guys will run steps on these trucks that look like rock sliders or look like they're semi-functional, but they just bolt to the factory location on the body. And whenever you hit those steps off-road or you set the weight of the vehicle onto them, they always collapse and bend and they'll usually come up and hit the doors and dent things in. 
So to me, it's just not practical enough if you're gonna truly wheel the vehicle and you need something like this to get the job done. So this is another neat part of ARB's whole suite that they offer. The other thing I'll say from just a review standpoint, I guess, is that I do like that they give you a sufficient amount of space to actually stand on this thing. You can see that my shoe fits in there most of the way, but especially when the door is open, there's even more room to kind of slide your foot in there. And that is really handy to have when you have a roof rack set up like this, because you're able to really stand up on the truck and actually get to the roof rack without just balancing or standing on the door sills or something like that. So overall, really smart piece. I like it a lot, but from here, let's move around to the back of the truck and take a look at that rear bumper. Similar to the Summit front bumper, the Summit rear bumper has a lot of the same design and build techniques used on it, and it makes for a pretty cohesive package. So what we have here is an all steel rear bumper with these steel hoops underneath. And then of course it's been powder coated to protect it. And you get the aluminum tread plate on the top for a little bit of traction here when you're stepping in and out of the bed. And overall, I think the design looks really nice. It does blend with the design of the rest of the equipment on the vehicle. But one of the things I like that is kind of unique to this bumper compared to a lot of the aftermarket bumpers you see for pickup trucks on the market normally, this has these hoops that act as kind of a rock slider for the truck bed. With pickup trucks, you typically have a pretty large overhang off the back. And this is one of the main areas you're gonna end up hitting when you get into more technical trails because as you go into a wash or drop down into a rut and then come back out of it, that rear bumper or the hitch will always smack against the rocks coming out. And if you're getting into some really technical terrain, the bumper can sometimes be a point where it'll hang up because you'll go over a larger obstacle, it'll hook onto whatever that rock or that object is, and then it starts to prevent the truck from moving. You can get yourself into a pretty bad situation Whereas with these hoops under here, it provides a rounded surface where now the bed of the truck and the rear end can kind of slide over that obstacle and you don't get wedged up or caught in a nasty area. And then of course, because it's there, you're protecting a little bit of that bedside and kind of the fender section as well. So definitely fits in line with the rest of the body armor protection on this vehicle. Talking about some of the other clever features included here now, you can see that ARB has the usual mounts and ports that you need for the license plate lights and your trailer wiring and everything else and the factory receiver hitch fits underneath so you're not losing any functionality there. But one other little clever feature I like that they added is this port here for a quick disconnect and what that's for is if you have an ARB compressor on board the truck, this gives you an area where you can hook the compressor up to this so that way when you need to air up or air down your tires or you know hook in a line and you want to air up an air mattress or something along those lines, you can attach it right here at the rear bumper instead of going around under the hood of the vehicle or if you have the compressor in the bed having to open everything up to get to it. So stuff like that's pretty clever. I like that this is integrated into it. And then of course it's got a little rubber cap just to keep it clean. So you're not scooping up a bunch of mud inside there, but it's little things like that that kind of make these products stand out from some of the other options on the market. Since we were already back here talking about the bumper, it seems like a good time to transition into the bed modifications here and more specifically ARB's drawer system. So drop the tailgate down and you can see that they have this thing pretty built out back here. So these drawers are gonna be a bit deeper than you'd see on some of the other options on the market, but it does eat up more bed space. So depends on how you use your truck. Once again, if you like that or not, personally, I think it does work well here. And with the way ARB has it built out and the kind of purpose this truck is intended for a bigger drawer system, isn't a bad thing. This is definitely not a go to the store and haul lumber kind of vehicle. That's not its main purpose. Certainly it's, designed to be an expedition rig. So it makes sense why they went this direction. You can tell that ARB spent some time with the fit and finish of this system as well. So you've got kind of a textured outdoors, weatherproof carpet across everything. And then it's designed to really fit nicely along the bedsides and just to tuck in in a way that looks like it's designed for this truck, which is pretty handy. And with the drawers, you've got your locking latches here, which are sort of useful. I find that usually with these trucks, the tailgate locks anyways, so it's not that big of a deal, but it is nice that they still have them. And when you pull the drawer out, it's running on actual bearings within the rails, so it rolls pretty smoothly. You can see you don't have to fight with it much, and you've got a lot of storage space in here. The length is pretty solid, although there is some area back here that's a little difficult to get to, but typically that's where you're going to put items that are not 
things that you access regularly or need unless you're in some sort of emergency or recovery situation. So not a huge deal, but for the most part, you can get to everything you need. And there's enough space here that you could fill this up with camping gear, you know, some extra chairs, some cooking equipment, whatever it may be that you want to run with you. In this case, ARB has some extra stuff like their air inflation kit and a stand for a high lift jack and some stuff like that. So there's a lot of utility that can be had with a big drawer system like this. And then of course, the deck on top is still solid. So you can use this to put cargo on top of it without things falling into the drawer or collapsing it. So there's definitely a lot of utility, as I said. Now we've made our way back around to the front of the truck and I wanted to cover a couple of the parts that I didn't talk about when we were initially making our walk around it. So the first of those parts is this safari snorkel. And I know a lot of guys think that this is just mall crawler material and I hear a lot of criticisms online of people saying, why would you run this if you're not gonna be hitting deep water crossings and when would you ever use it? But the reality is that snorkels are actually first and foremost designed for dust. And the idea is that if you're running in convoys or on really dusty tracks and trails, that you can suck some fresh air from up high as opposed to just eating up all the super dusty air that comes in through the wheel wells or down by the bumper, which is usually kind of where they run those factory air inlets. That's kind of the main idea behind it and it serves that purpose well. And then the additional benefit is that with water crossings, if you have a properly sealed snorkel, you do have a little bit more room to get in there and not worry about hydro locking your motor. The nice thing about the snorkel itself though is that even with it being this huge piece of equipment on the side of the truck, it does fit the way you would hope it would. So the lines are very clean along the fender. They even took into account kind of the bend or this like bevel that is in the factory ranger fender. So it accommodates it without having huge gaps and looking like it's just hodgepodge stuck on here. And then it ties into the factory air box. So you don't have to run a new custom intake or cut holes through the inside of your factory inlet to make it work, but you will have to punch a hole through the fender for this to meet it. So that's always the big risk factor here is if you're concerned about cutting the fender of your truck, you're probably not gonna touch one of these with a 10 foot pole, but if you're confident you can do it right, the benefits are pretty strong. With all the snorkel talk out of the way, I wanna move forward back to the front bumper, but to talk about this lighting setup that I kind of alluded to earlier. Now, of course, ARB stuck with their own in-house lighting for this truck, and what they have here is their Intensity Solus lights. Now, they do offer some light bar options as well if you're looking for something that's more along that classic straight line bar look, sort of like what they have up on the roof rack, but I'm glad that they stuck with a round light on the front just because I prefer the classic round off-road look. Now, these lights are not just about looks. They're extremely bright for one thing. The output is ridiculous on these, and you would imagine so with how big they are but the way ARB has it built out, there's basically 36 individual LEDs in each of these lights, and then it uses a one-piece reflector that goes over that, but each cup within the reflector is tuned specifically to where that LED is located within the light to create a very specific beam pattern. Typically with the round ones, you'll see two options for beam pattern, so you can go with either a wide or a spot. Spot's obviously gonna aim just for straight all out distance in front of the vehicle so you can look ahead, especially in higher speed situations. And the wide pattern's gonna sacrifice a little bit of that distance to give you a better spread so then you can look into corners or see off trail a little bit more. And overall, you can combo that however you wanted. Some people like to have two spots or two wides or one of each. It really just depends on the type of build and the type of driving that you do. But overall, these are a pretty solid option if you're looking for that kind of lighting on your vehicle. And I think it looks great with the rest of ARB setup here. Obviously it fits perfectly on the Summit bumper. And there's actually two color options here, which is kind of funny. These are the red and black option. There's also an all black option. They're not that much different, but I kind of like the red touches, especially with red on the worn winch and some of the other little areas where there's just little tiny accents like that. Overall, really handy light. And of course, ARB makes them durable. And the way these are set up, they're an IP68 rated light, which means they're gonna be waterproof up to almost nine feet, according to what I've read. So I haven't tested that, but if you wanted to run head on into a lake, I guess you could try. And then obviously the dust proof and mud proof part of that is really important too, if you're actually gonna be running this thing off road. Finally, the last part I wanna cover on this truck is ARB skid plates down underneath. And this is obviously a really crucial part if you're truly trail driving these vehicles because the last thing you want is a rogue rock or a stick or some sort of log to come up underneath and punch a hole through your oil pan or to damage your transfer case or something like that. 
So ARB builds theirs out of three millimeter thick steel that's pressed and folded. And then they apply a zinc coating over the top of that as well as a silver powder coat. So that way these things aren't going to rust and corrode and they can take some damage if you do brush them up against things and it's not just gonna crumple or obviously immediately start rusting and just fall apart into dust. So it's designed for a true working truck. Now with that, I think the skid plates also look pretty nice and I like that they spent some time on the hardware as well. So the bolt heads and things like that are tucked into skid plates and protected a bit instead of just being straight up exposed on the outside. And the reason that that would be important is if you come up and you do brush against a rock or you hit something, you don't want it to catch the bolt head and then tear that off or bend the hardware and start creating damage where you could never undo it again or get the skid plate off without cutting it. So providing that extra little bit of protection and forethought and the way it's built makes a huge difference in the actual utility of the skid plate. I also want to throw a quick mention in there that you can see they also have their red recovery tow hook applied on here because the way the Ranger set up, the tow hooks kind of support the skid plates. And if you have a Ranger with a factory bash plate, it's the same way. But ARB does have an extra hook there that's designed to work with D-rings so you can provide a little bit of a safer and better recovery than just hooking onto a factory tow loop or certainly just trying to attach anywhere else on the frame or underneath the truck. Overall, they've got it pretty well covered underneath and I think it's a really good setup with this build. Well, folks, that's going to be a wrap on this walk around of the ARB Ranger. Hopefully this was an informative video for you guys and you found it somewhat interesting. I think it's a really neat build overall, and I'm happy that ARB lent us the truck so we could do this sort of stuff for you guys. But if you're interested in looking at some more detailed info on each of these products or you want to pick some of this up for yourself, we'll have links down in the description that are going to shoot you over to our website. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we are doing a true in-depth review on this BP-51 suspension for the Ranger. So keep an eye out for that video because you're going to want to check that out if you're looking for some real in-depth reactions and thoughts on how this performs and how the truck drives off-road and what the capability is like. So I think that's going to be really exciting. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.